job? I said, yeah. What are you going to be doing? I'm going to NAACP Legal Defense Fund. And he asked me, don't you have a real job? <laughs> That's when I understood. Those of you who are native New Yorkers and those of you who are not. I talked about the South just to put it all in perspective. That's when I understood back in 1972 that I was up South. Had a lot of arguments with people. When I told them I was going into civil rights in New York, I said, we don't need that, man. You from Arkansas, what's wrong with you? We can buy Gucci. We can buy Gucci. Or Gucci. We can go to Saks. We can do all of these things. What are you talking about, civil rights in New York City? Well, my brothers, I'm here to tell you tonight that Tawana Brawley is just a long line. A long line of what I have seen since I've been here. And I don't think my eyes are that damaged. I'm here to tell you that we, in the spirit of 505, need not only to reclaim each other, we need to reclaim our community. We need to reclaim our people. We need to reclaim what we ought to be doing in our rightful place, especially here. Arkansas now, those who still think in this way, go down to Little Rock now, and you'll see a black woman mayor. Go down to Birmingham now, what we used to call Birmingham, and you'll see Richard Aaron. In Atlanta, Georgia, you know the problems black folks are dealing with in Atlanta now? They're dealing with pollution, and those kind of esoteric problems. They're not even dealing with what we're talking about. Pasco's Restaurant, those of you who've been down to Atlanta, Pasco started out with a chicken shack, now he owns the concession at the Atlanta airport. New Orleans, Los Angeles, Chicago. I'm here to say this tonight in a very, very genuine and yet challenging way. Black folks in New York State, and this is not meant to diminish anything any of you have done, because I know how hard it is. Believe me, I know. When the governor is threatening to put us in jail, when Mayor Koch, the mention of our name, makes his bald head go crazy. <laughs> when all of these things are happening, then you understand what you're dealing with. Why are these people attacking us so? And the answer is very clear. They've been dealing with folks over the last several years, and let's just trace the history a bit. Rum Bus will truly appreciate this. You had a congressman in New York who was one of my early heroes who turned all kinds of things upside down. Adam Clayton Powell. New York is the home of Malcolm X, Paul Robeson, all of this rich history in Harlem and all of that. But what has been happening in the last several years? In the last several years, we've been giving out Tom Awards. We've been giving out Shuffling Awards. We've been giving out the kind of awards that nobody should even get. And I say that because when we began to say things truthfully and forcefully, we went up and argued with this man named Mario Cuomo. Let me tell you something about him. Those of you who think he's presidential material, you better start rethinking that. Because I'm going to tell you here right now, the man does not have any concept, <laughs> any concept of dealing with black folks on an equal level. None. If you think I'm wrong about that, talk to him. The man sat there. And after he saw he was not going to be able to talk to us like boys, he told us stuff like, I'm absolutely committed to the system. And we told him right in his face, we absolutely committed to change. He expected we're going to back down. We're not going anywhere. We're not backing anywhere. But Mario Cuomo is not accustomed to that. 
Because you've been having Negroes, and I say that the way it's coming out, Negroes who have convinced him that he can talk to us any kind of way that he wants. The people who are condemning us now. I ask the question, where have you been when Cox has been running all these 20, those of you in finance? Cox has been running a $25 billion budget each year for the last 11. Then he's going to have the temerity to say Maddox and Mason are the problems in New York. No, my brother. If I didn't learn that in Indiana and Columbia, I may have learned that on my grandmama's knee. You can't tell me I got $5 and you got $25 billion that you are corrupting, giving out, you know, like they did Africa. You take the Bronx, I'll take Brooklyn, I'll take Queens, and all of that, and then you're going to condemn us? And people are not going to deal with what he has been doing? Your children. Education. You want to talk about that in a serious way? Let's do it. But don't tell me that with a $6 billion budget, you can't teach people how to read and write. You can't teach people how to do math. You can't teach people how to do physics. They taught it to us in Marion, Arkansas, and we didn't have any of those kind of resources. But guess what? Your governor says he's going to come up with a decade for the show. What happened to the last decade? Well, we're not supposed to think like that, are Because we? we're just capitalists. We don't know anything. We can't analyze anything. Those are some of the things, some of the perspectives, that when you begin to look at a case, so when you can shoot a, a grandmother down, not on even the streets, my brother, but in her apartment, when you can shoot her down in her apartment, and then you can have a police commissioner who can tell us, and we got him in there. Reverend Butts went down to, to meet with John Conyers, brought him up into New York City to have congressional hearings on police brutality. That's what got Ben Ward his job. He has never acknowledged that today. But what does he tell us? The woman was shot within the guidelines. Michael Stewart, what school is this crime? Writing graffiti on the subway? Guess what? Nobody beat him to death. The criminal justice system decided nobody was responsible for that. Yvonne Smallwood, sister was getting ready to go out and buy her Christmas gifts for her children. Right before Christmas, they beat her to death. Those cases have been going on and on and on and on. And when you stand up and you say enough is enough, when you stand up and you say like Dick Gregory said in his book, no more lies, when you stand up and do that, what do they do? Half of you all in this room probably think I'm crazy, right? You ain't got to admit it, man. But understand what I'm saying. It's not meant to be a joke. It's not meant to be funny or to condemn anyone. But what do they do? They pump that poison out. They tell you hate this brother or hate that sister. They don't tell you that Koch is bad for your health. Matter of fact, you had folks who invited him up to the church on Martin Luther King's birthday. And this is what really got to me. Ed Koch is going to tell me, Mohouse graduate, about Dr. King. Dr. King wouldn't like you doing this. I said, wait a minute, my brother. You don't even know Dr. King. You went down to the South for eight days you know, like the man who said he was black when he when he did his little thing? You went down to the South for eight days in 1963. That's your civil rights record. And you're going to tell us what Dr. King stood for. And I'm saying this for these young brothers who are here now. Don't let them take Dr. King from us twice. Don't let them tell your children that all Dr. King did was to be reasonable. That's what these folks start telling us on how to reach why don't you be reasonable? How are you going to reason with the folks who did what they did to Michael Griffin? How are you going to sit down as one congressman told us to do? What we need now are some basketball games. We need to get the races together and play basketball. Dr. King did not go down there and deal with Bull Potter talking about playing basketball. 
That's not how he dealt with Jim Clark and Selma, Alabama. The point that I'm trying to make is basically this. When you start talking about Dr. King, don't let them keep Dr. King under Lincoln's monument. That brother took the shirts and the ties off. He put on the overalls. He faced and ultimately was killed because of what he stood for. And he did it, he said, creative tension, turning up the thermometer on all of what was going on down south. And those of you who had the occasion to visit, or those of you who have roots there, that region of the country is going to give Jesse Jackson on Tuesday a tremendous victory. Because that region of the country, my brothers, is much further along the road than we are up here in Gucci Pucci, New York. <laughs> yeah. 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 Again, the point is one for us to accept the challenge in the spirit of 5 New 5. When I was being a pledge to use the probates at Morehouse, a lot of young brothers came through that. One of the things that we always tried to do was to teach folks, no matter what, do something for your people, love your people, go out here and do something that all of us can be proud of. So as we go through this, you may not understand it, but maybe after tonight, go back through your own background. Do some reflecting on your own. Think about some things that you may want to even do in the future. There is absolutely no reason in the world. And I wish this brother well. But I think it says something about what we are willing to accept. That we let these folks, not us, go out to Minneapolis, Minnesota and bring a school chancellor in here for us, the first black one. What does that say to all of the young black folks in this city? What does that say to all of the young black people in this state? It says you don't have a single black in New York State. And that, I think, is something we need to address. Mayor, not Mayor, Mario, the governor said that we can have a mayor in New York City, this is what's coming out of his office the last few days, that we can have a mayor in New York City in the year 2050. Did y'all hear what I said? This is how bad this situation is. But in terms of a challenge, we out of Black History Month now, but each day should be Black History for us. We need to look at our history, we need to look at our individual histories, and we need to reclaim each other. We are all we have. We are all we have. Folks can tell you about coalition building with them, but the price is too high. See, I've had folks to call me and they say, listen, this is what you got to do. You know, you, you're making white people mad. You, 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 you really are getting to them now. That's not my objective. My objective is justice. My objective is when a Tawana Brawley occurs, you know what they're saying about this sister now? Saying maybe she did it to herself. Maybe it didn't happen at all. We literally cursed out some press folks today. You know press folks, especially white ones, get mad when you talk to them. They ain't used to this. You're supposed to be so glad that they are interviewing you.